We live in South Florida, and our whole way of life is at risk here in South Florida. I mean, sea levels are rising. Storms are getting stronger. We're at risk. And if we want to continue to enjoy the great lifestyle we have here in South Florida, we need to act now. And all of us need to act now. Um, and if we don't act now, you know, we're putting our children's uh, future at stake. I think it starts at the local level. Despite what's going on you know, around the world or at the, at, the, at the national level, it really starts at your local level. It starts with individual action. It starts with you know, these grassroots environmental organizations. And it starts at your local government and really local government taking the leadership role. And we see that happening. What you see, especially from our younger generation now, is they're demanding climate action. I believe that we should all be involved. This needs to be a bipartisan effort. We need to lead by example. And the city of Coral Gables has put all the resources forward in to educate this community in taking little steps that can make major impacts. If, it, if it's either recycling more efficiently, it's either water conservation or electricity conservation. So a lot of things that we can do in this community that just may just curb one type of behavior that you do on a daily basis that could save you money and it could help the environment. But one thing that cities can do to, to get ahead of this problem is what Coral Gables is doing, which is stopping um, the sources coming into its community in the first place. So banning plastic bags, banning straws, banning styrofoam, keeping that stuff from even coming into Coral Gables. Because once it comes here, we have a problem. What do we do with it? So source reduction is part of the solution, part of the way forward. And Coral Gables is on the front line, on the vanguard of, of figuring out how to reduce the sources of our waste. The city of Coral Gables may soon ban plastic bags at city special events and by city retailers. Coral Gables, about a four hour drive from here, about to be the first town uh, in the state of Florida to ban these here plastic bags. If you see one of these plastic bags in Coral Gables, then that means somebody is doing something illegal and they are most likely going to have to pay for it. Uh, the ordinance on, on uh, police tiring and the one on, on plastic bags are just an example of how you know, proactive the city is in terms of uh, not only uh, resilience to climate change, but you know, also just uh, making sure we, we live a more sustainable life. Uh, and it's pretty bold. Not, not many cities, actually no other cities uh, in, the, in Southeast Florida decided to ban plastic bags. So that's, that's a really bold move. As a fisherman, I find myself on the waterways all the time. And I would see plastic, I would see styrofoam. And these are things that we can combat and make initiatives like banning polystyrene and, bl and banning plastic bags. We can take greater pride in the waterways here in Coral Gables and throughout South Florida. Beautiful sea animals, that, sea creatures that, that call home to the over 40 miles of coastline that we have here in the city of Coral Gables. You know, these, these are treasures. These are treasures that we sometimes take for granted because we're not in the water, but that we need to do everything in our power to make sure that we protect it. My understanding is that in 2050 there will be more plastic in the ocean than there will be actually living animals in the ocean. You tell me, is this worth? Is this fight worth take, you know, taking to capital, to the capital, and making sure that other cities feel comfortable and passing this ordinance? Yes. 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 
Yes, thank you very, very much to everybody who's made this possible and to the support and to the public and Coral Gables is a better city today for this. We are the first on the plastic bag front. There's no doubt that the, this commission and the administration of the city is committed wholeheartedly to environmental initiatives as staff time in order to enforce this is significant. Um, the campaigns that were put out to make sure that people understood what the requirements were were significant. And as you know, litigation is expensive. And yes, we've expended um, significant funds in order to, you know, uh, litigate these cases. And, and happily, we have been successful thus far. When the ordinance took effect, uh, we gave them six months uh, on educating the, uh, the businesses. And we went business by business giving out the handout. Mi nombre es Juan Carlos, yo trabajo para la ciudad de Coral Gables, del Departamento de Code Enforcement. Eh, cuando usted da la comida para llevar, ¿qué tipo de contenedor usa usted? Eh, se están usando los de aluminio. ¿Me lo, sí. ¿Me lo pudiera mostrar? Sí. Gracias, Javier. I like to go and visit, I like to introduce myself, I give them my information, let them know who I am and why I'm here, and bring to their attention the polystyrene and the plastic bag. Sí, sí, eso está bien. Está, está de acuerdo. This is the business I'd like to visit. It's a new restaurant. Caja Caliente. What type of containers do you use? Plastic. That's, that's, that is in compliance. And what about, do you have plastic bags or paper bags? Paper. May I see them? Perfect. I'm going to take a picture of each one and just write that you're in compliance, okay? Today, thankfully, both properties had already taken it upon themselves to come into compliance, so there was no violation today. I still have to monitor the area, and I'll just I'll stop by randomly. You know, one day I'll visit one or two restaurants, a few days will go by, I'll visit, I still have to monitor. But for the most part, they are in compliance. Time has come and gone, the year passed, we began to enforce plastic bags, and likewise, I love to say today, we do not have single-use plastic bags in the city of Coral Gables. I get calls probably once a week, if not more often, from municipalities throughout the state of Florida who are interested in instituting these types of bans and who want to know what we did, how we did it, uh, and are really contemplating how they should move forward. The other thing we did earlier this year was there was much talk about plastic, we use plastic straws. And so we have a program that incentivizes businesses to not give the straw. Skip the straw is the name of that campaign. And what we do is we say, you know, don't willingly give it. Just wait, if someone asks for it, then you provide it. So those are the main three initiatives. I am very proud that my office gets to defend these types of initiatives and that we have commissioners who are so willing um, really to put themselves out there so that our environment um, can be protected, not just for our generation, but for many generations to come. One I like a lot is how Coral Gables is really transferring its entire fleet towards electric vehicles. When we first started to work with Coral Gables five years ago, there were zero electric vehicles in the fleet. Now it's probably got more electric vehicles than any other city in Florida, which is really great because that's the future of, of, of vehicles. I'm proud to say that right now we have almost 50 electric, fully electric vehicles in the city. Our plan is to get to over 80 in the next two years. And that puts the city of Coral Gables, which has 51,000 residents and a budget of $200 million, as the largest 100% electric car fleet in the state of Florida. It means less maintenance, no oil changes, no air filter changes. You're saving between $100 to $300 a month in gas, depending on how much you use your car. You also get a reduction in tolls when you use it in the highways. We've, we've really been pushing the envelope on that and, and really become a leader on that. 10% of our fleet is now electric, of our total fleet, which puts us on par with anyone around the nation when it comes to the amount of your fleet that you have that it's electric. And associated with that is our charging infrastructure. We have 22 charging points around our city um, that residents and our fleet can access to be able to charge vehicles. So we see that adoption happening on, our, on the residential side as well, where more residents are comfortable purchasing electric vehicles because the city has been able to install that infrastructure and make them feel comfortable in wanting to drive an electric vehicle. So we've had over 11,000 charging sessions just in our parking garages alone. Uh, and we've saved over 12,000 pounds of well, gallons of fuel and over 28,000 pounds of greenhouse gas emissions just by using our charging stations within our parking garage, which has been a huge success and we're going to continue to build on that. Our goal for our electric vehicles is to have 78 vehicles in our fleet by the end of 2021 and continue to add to our charging infrastructure um, and continue to build that out. The little part we can do in the world to limit 
our carbon emissions. Uh, I think the best way is what Core Gables has done already, which is to try to convert to uh, uh, electrical vehicles everywhere we can. We're not in a perfect world for EV, that's for sure. Uh, if you can, try to switch. You, you'll see it's, it's not that complicated, actually. It's already happening. You're seeing all these different manufacturers roll out new 100% electric cars. The reason why is because people see not only the environmental stewardship, but they also see the financial ramifications of it. I think that the United States needs to revitalize its own recycling industries, reutilize the materials that we purchase, because first of all, we don't know where to put the waste. I mean, there's no place for it. Um, and we're running out of the, the raw materials are harder and harder to come by. So it just makes sense to do what our ancestors did. We were talking about our grandparents who were, they would buy a, a bottle of Coca-Cola and they'd return the bottle of Coca-Cola and they would come back with more Coca-Cola in it. It's a circular, circular economy. These are not difficult things to do. They're things that have been done. It's just that collectively, we need to decide that it's important and that's the way we want to live. We started household hazardous uh, waste and electronic recycling events about three years ago and they've been incredibly popular. It's been amazing to see how popular they've become. So in the nine events that we've done, we typically do it twice a year in April around Earth Day and in November around America Recycles Day. And we've collected over 175,000 pounds of electronic waste and household hazardous waste that otherwise would have ended up in our landfills. In our last event that we just had in, in April, we had over 1,500 people come by in just three hours. Well, I think that's the biggest thing that we can do as a government is make it convenient people, for people to do right by the environment. So having these type of events where we're there and they can come drop off the material and we know that it gets safely and securely recycled or disposed of, as opposed to them just putting it out in their garbage cans and it ending up most likely in the landfills. Well, we're interested in, in making sure that we uh, have our recyclable uh, items properly disposed of and it's great that Coral Gables is doing this uh, I think every quarter or something so we're really happy about that. It's still one way for people to at least properly dispose of things that would otherwise be disposed of improperly. I got rid of some old paint and paint cans and some e-waste, some old VCRs and things I've been sitting on for too many years. I spent a lot of money on and they're just obsolete so I finally had to part with them. We were the first city in, in, in Miami-Dade County to be able to do a prescription drug disposal program. We have it here in our police department where residents can come by 24 hours a day, seven days a week and dispose of their unwanted prescription drugs or expired. So we want to be able to, again, create a way where our residents can easily dispose of their material and that gets safely incinerated with a waste energy plant that we partner with. Um, so I think people want to do right and if you give them the option to be able to do right by the environment, they're going to want to do that and they're going to feel good about do it, taking those types of actions. And that's something that we've really built into the fabric of our city. I think the two biggest challenges in Florida, but everywhere in America, is one, energy, and two, transportation. And the way that we get from point A to, B, to point B now is what's leading to climate change and putting our lifestyle at risk here in South Florida. Transportation uh, accounts for 46% of greenhouse gas emissions in the city of Coral Gables. It's the single largest contributor of greenhouse gas emissions in our city. And in 2015, 370,000 trips started or stopped in the city of Coral Gables. That doesn't count the number of trips that just passed through. If we converted 17,000 of those trips to something other than driving in a car alone, we could reach our greenhouse gas emission goal of reducing emissions by 20%. What the deterrent is having safe infrastructure in place. It's been shown time and time again, if you build safe infrastructure for people, they will use it. Now, our transit system is very popular. We had over 1.2 million rides last year, and our freebie is very popular with 60,000 rides in the first year. Um, you access it by using an app, it's door-to-door -door service, and very convenient and reliable for our users. The City of Coral Gables Trolley is a model for South Florida. It was one of the first trolleys in South Florida, and it's free and it connects people to transit hubs. It runs right through our central business district and it's 
fast, free, and reliable. Over 1.2 million people rode the trolley last year, and one study showed that it took over 750 vehicles off the road per day. And that's people driving those cars, looking for parking spaces, and causing congestion in our city. Coral Gables has a trolley system. I'm sure that will grow. It has it spent a lot of money making its streets safer and more walkable, getting more bicycles into the community. I'm sure that will continue to um, make Coral Gables a very distinctive and special place. So there's so many ways that I see it moving forward, and I think it will continue to be a leader. I think biking is a really important part of changing the way we transport ourselves in this city. Uh, everybody knows there's a lot of traffic and it's really the easiest way. It uh, reduces carbon footprint and I support it 100%. The, the city offers a program, uh, Free Bike Racks for Businesses, where businesses can reach out to the city and request a bike rack be placed in front of their building to accommodate people who choose to ride a bike. Some of the things that you'll see happening in the city of Coral Gables in the next couple of years, uh, we're building 20 miles of sidewalks in the city where they did not exist before. That's over the next four years. We will also be expanding our micro-mobility devices like the electric scooters, the electric assist bikes. You'll also begin to see more bicycling infrastructure. The future will be in protected bicycle infrastructure that's connected. So you don't have a fear of riding in a protected bike lane and being dropped off um, into traffic. And that's what will encourage ridership to grow um, in our city and in the region. We consistently get calls from across the country related to how we implement our transportation initiatives. Um, most recently what's been popular has been the scooters. We were the first um, in Florida to um, implement a scooter program which has been very successful. Uh, we, were, we regulated it before we allowed um, scooter vendors into the city and our complaints have been minimal and the users have been happy. Another thing that's really cool that's going on in Coral Gables is how they're trying to utilize solar power and its facilities. It's very challenging to use solar power in the Sunshine State. It shouldn't be that way, but it is. But, and Coral Gables has decided we're not gonna wait for the state to catch up to us. We're gonna move ahead by using solar in our facilities so that when the next hurricane comes, we'll have power and it'll be coming from the sun. That's really cool. We passed groundbreaking legislation in reference to solar panels. We want to make it as easy as possible for a person in this community who is considering making that investment, that we make it as easy as possible and as cost effective. Streamlining of the permitting process along with the removal of all permit costs associated with the installation of solar panels on your residence or on your business. This has been embraced by the community. A lot of people are using it. A lot of people are taking advantage of this. And you see other cities following in our, in our footsteps. So we just got designated by the Department of Energy as a SolSmart bronze designee, and that has to do with we waived our city permit fees uh, for solar installations. We're expediting the permitting process. We're also working on putting solar on some of our facilities, our public works facility and our youth center. We've identified as perfect facilities to be able to put solar on. And we've also installed 11 solar benches within our city parks. I wanted to make sure that we revamped our building code to ensure that lead and equivalent structures were truly implemented into every structure that was built in the city of Coral Gables. The uh, public safety building, as all new uh, city-owned buildings, is being built uh, to meet a lead silver requirement. So it's an environmentally uh, designed building with the latest uh, design principles revolving around efficiency, uh, mechanical efficiency, glass, uh, and many other things. All components of the building uh, are being designed as such, so it'll be a, a, a top, one of the top, if not the, the best uh, design uh, public uh, safety building around, with the projected completion of uh, next August. Coral Gables has gone from being, like I said, maybe slightly, slightly behind to being a leader, certainly in Southeast Florida, and, and now probably the United States. It's, it's a city that others are looking to and where it's going because they want to emulate this city. 
Um, it doesn't mean that Coral Gables is done. Sustainability is not a destination, it's a journey. And there will always be new opportunities to seize and new technologies to apply. But at the same time, it accomplished a tremendous amount. It should be very proud of what it's done. This is an from you and me together. Tomorrow's in our hands now. But at the end of the day, uh, sustainability happens at the local level and it happens inside your house. Looking down from up on the moon is a tiny boom on board. We won't fix this just by adapting. At one point we need to stop emitting carbon. We need to do something right now. We need to leave a foundation. We need to leave this, this beautiful place better than it was when we started. It's our